So I've set up the Battle of Monmouth Courthouse. Um, this is, again, from the GMT Battles of the American Revolution series. I have another game on Monmouth Courthouse uh, from an old S&T, which I actually like quite a bit. But this one seems to highlight certain aspects of the battle that uh, it may be doing, it may do a better job. Uh, it is still at a large scale, um, almost an operational feel for a game that's clearly fairly tactical. I mean, it's a single battle, right? Uh, what we've got right now is Washington's army has been kind of uh, dogging Clinton's army, and Clinton came to a stop in his change of base from Philadelphia to New York. He could have probably pressed on. It's almost as though he's challenged Washington to a fight. Now, an interesting series of events happens where uh, Charlie Lee, or Charles Lee, Washington's uh, top subordinate, it suggest, it has been suggesting all along that chasing the British was a bad idea. Uh, that if they engage, they will probably end up uh, in a losing fight. Washington goes against this advice and decides to attack Clinton's rear guard. And uh, Lee says he's not interested in the command. So it's offered to uh, the Marquis de Lafayette, who takes the offer and prepares for this assault against the rear and, and supply side of the, uh, of the British forces. And just before the battle, Lee comes back and says, I, you know, every thought in my position, I think I should be in charge. So he's put in charge of his army, not, uh, of, of the, the advance guard. Now, Historically, what happened was Lee marched forward, seeming to be completely committed to the battle, and then he got in sight of the British troops and more or less stopped giving commands, and the commands that he gave indicated that he wanted to withdraw, and complete chaos ensued. And basically, without firing a shot, the forces he led turned around and started heading back. <laughs> Uh, Washington intercepts Lee and relieves him of command, and the attack then starts again. Uh, the British essentially got what they wanted out of this. They didn't. Um, they didn't get defeated here. On the other hand, some of the best British troops uh, weren't in the rear guard itself, but were called up under Cornwallis uh, to help slow the Americans down. And the Americans showed uh, that they're capable of handling that. <laughs> so while this wasn't some major victory for, for, for the new, new Continental Army, it certainly wasn't a defeat, and it actually helped their morale overall. This is the battle where Molly Pitcher, one of the legends of the period, uh, arrives to man a gun in her husband's battalion. Um, a lot of, uh, uh, Matt Anthony Wayne made some, uh, made some of his credibility on this. Uh, so there's a lot of, uh, a lot of positive aspects to this battle for the American side. When I've played it out in the other version, um, there's a lot less command control issues facing Lee. Uh, he can march forward. In this game, they handle those all through these command and control tables which uh, basically send his troops either not advancing quickly or trying to leave or whatever, just kind of at random getting these weird commands. So that's, uh, I think that's a more interesting solution uh, during the time that Lee's in command. Smaller scale, uh, the other game was smaller scale, though, where musket fire was actually incorporated, not just rifle fire, and rifle and artillery. So, it's a, it, it's a different feel, feel to the game. Um, and we'll, we'll see how this works out. I'm, I'm, I've got high hopes after the, uh, the Saratoga. I, 
I see something pleasant in this system, there's no question.